about black conservatives when they have the audacity to think for themselves and become educated about our history and the myth of things um, like the Southern switch and the Southern strategy, which never happened. Yep, that's me in Congress. I'm sure you're asking, how did that happen? Well, it's actually a pretty wild story. And we'll get to that story and my literally effortless Candace Owens impression. But first, hi, and here is some news. Last week, Congress had a hearing about the rise in white nationalist violence, a thing that is real, and it turned partly into a complete embarrassment of easily provable lies and Republicans trying to not talk about white nationalist violence, a thing that is real. But we'll get into that. First, this again. The Southern switch and the Southern strategy, which never happened. And there is a PragerU video um, that further explicates it that I would advise that everybody watches. Thank so you for your time. That's a clip of a complete liar lying about easily verified facts, citing Prager University at a congressional hearing. Now, what's Prager University, you ask? Which, okay, we'll cover this in great detail in another episode, but briefly, Prager University is, according to its own website, not an accredited university. It's the brainchild of decades-long neoconservative radio host Dennis Prager. It's funded by homophobic, ultra-religious, fracking billionaires, the Wilkes Brothers, despite having giant donate buttons all over their website. Yes, donate to make sure we can keep making videos, or we'll have to ask more billionaires for money. Prager U has countless videos that are grossly misleading about science, history, economics, and the like, and all of the scripts are edited by Mr. Prager. But the main ethos of Prager U is to bring back conservative Christian values and traditions. America has done nothing wrong, racism doesn't exist, and we must protect moneyed interests at all costs, while following the advice and boldly inaccurate information of Dennis Prager specifically. Again, he edits all of the scripts. And don't worry, they're, they're totally not culty and weird about it. Who is Dennis Prager? And why do so many people love him? He changes the way you live for the better. He makes you a better person. Super normal from a fake university littered with countless verifiably false statements. Their videos are all under five minutes, but they lie so much in them that debunking them and adding context to their lies often takes upwards of 20 minutes. They're good at what they do. Lie. And again, we don't have the time to go over it, so links down below, go Google their lies, it's not hard to find. And we'll get into the southern strategy that this liar is lying about, but let's just do a simple example that I think is just the chefiest kiss a chef ever kissed. This video about stock buybacks and how they're good actually. You see, Donald Trump's big tax cut for corporations that was supposed to help the working class mostly went to executives who used it for stock buybacks. So PragerU made this video where they talk about what are stock buybacks? Spoiler alert, they're good and don't worry about it. They specifically cite companies like Home Depot. The Home Depot. Who engaged in this behavior. But it's good. And then the video ends and you go to the description and see that this video is in conjunction with Job Creators Network. And so you go, what's, what's that? And you find out it gets a significant amount of funding from the billionaire Mercer family and it was founded by a different billionaire who also founded Home Depot. That's interesting. Anyway, PragerU is trash, and they're starting to infiltrate Congress with their lies, making even more lies in Congress than normal. But we'll get back to our beautiful friends at PragerU, maybe. Let's return to the star of this terrible film, Candace Owens. Record scratch, freeze frame, yep, that's me. How did I get here? Well, Candace Owens grew up in Connecticut. During high school, her town's mayor's son and his shitty friends left her a bunch of racist, death-thready voicemails. Incidentally, this article about it mentions that earlier Candace was arrested for harassment in an unrelated incident. More on this later, but fast forward to 2015 when she ran an anti-Trump and anti-conservative website called Degree 180, a name which we'll discover is a little too on the nose for foreshadowing. After the site fell apart, she moved on to a project called Social Autopsy, which was her idea for a website that would document hate speech something she doesn't think exists, and online harassment, ostensibly doxing anyone who makes mean comments online. While perhaps well-intentioned, the website was panned by people from both sides of the political spectrum. A few months later, Candace came out as a conservative. Interesting, a real, a real degree 180 turn there. She claimed that her decision came after the liberal media lied about her website that nobody lied about 
and everyone, not just liberals, told the truth about it. There's a Breitbart article about it. And she said that a bunch of liberals posed as right-wing trolls tweeting racist stuff at her. Because right-wing racist trolls are rare online. So now she's a conservative. Now, one, one could see this as perhaps a hollow, opportunistic move. But someone else might say, well, some anonymous people were mean online, so I changed all of my opinions about the economy, social issues, systemic racism, healthcare, and history. But whatever. She soon began releasing videos about how she doesn't care about white supremacy, Black Lives Matter is just a bunch of whiners, America isn't racist, things like that. And she was soon hired as the director for urban engagement for Turning Point USA, a conservative activist group with questionable finances and practices, as well as a history of racial bias. One could argue that this hire now allows Turning Point USA's founder, Charles Tiberius Kirk, to sit back and laugh while a black woman yells at Black Lives Matter so he doesn't have to. But who knows? Candace continued with Turning Point while making videos for PragerU, telling celebrities, Dear celebrities, I'm sorry to be the one to have to break this to you, but we do not care not in the slightest particle of an imaginary thing, what you think. Right before, a celebrity agreed with her. So this, 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 this one's a free thinker. She also doesn't believe in climate change, despite admitting not knowing about it, and saying she doesn't trust Scientific American because it has .com in its name. So, I don't know. It just seems like, like maybe she's not a very reliable source on much of anything and doesn't need to be in a hearing with a bunch of serious people and organizations discussing hate crimes and white nationalist terrorism. So why was she asked? Why is she there? What the f can she add? Well, there are a lot of theories, but first let's hear from her. I received word on my way in that many of the journalists were confused as to why I was invited and none of them knew. Uh, that I myself uh, was the victim of a hate crime when I was in high school. She brings up her history with a hate crime, as I mentioned, and says that it opened her eyes to conservatism and how the NAACP took advantage of her to boost the idea that there are hate crimes, a thing that she literally experienced and is talking about. Also interesting considering that she previously said what opened her eyes to conservatism was being harassed online by liberals pretending to be anonymous right-wing racist trolls. Also in 2016, she wrote an open letter to her old high school talking about the incident and how the media circus surrounding it ruined her life for a long time, along with people not believing her, calling her a liar, in it for the money, and ugly. And th this, this sucks. Nobody believed her, and they made her the center of attention, and the freaking mayor's son didn't even apologize for the racist shit he did. It sucks that people called you a liar and in it for the money. And it especially sucks because it really seems like you're lying and in it for the money about all this other stuff. Not the hate crime, but all of this other stuff. Also, I would never call you ugly on the outside, so. Anywho, Candace spent a lot of her time during the hearing dismissing the very idea of racism in America today, citation needed, and she brought up her grandfather, who was alive during the Jim Crow era, to illustrate what real racism is like because pointing to the brutality of the past in order to dismiss any criticism of the present is, is, a, is, a, is a valid argument for Congress? We, we, country built on racism? It's, it's, over. it's over now. She says all the hate crime statistics are fake. And like, do you think the FBI is faking statistics to help minorities? They sent a letter to Martin Luther King Jr. to convince him to kill himself. And don't get me wrong, all right, one of Candace's messages is that she's not a victim. She hates the, the victim mentality. And that's a good, positive message. But not wanting to feel like a victim doesn't mean racism doesn't exist, or that it's not a problem, or that racists don't suddenly feel emboldened for some reason. So again, kind of pointless. What's she doing here? Under the Democrat Party's Jim Crow laws, Democrat, 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 the Democrat, Democrat, the Democrat, Democrat terrorist organization of that time, the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, hmm. It seems like, maybe, the Republicans invited her. Maybe, 
so they can have a black person say that racism doesn't exist and white nationalism isn't a problem and that the real racists are the Democrats. Maybe, maybe that's why she's there. And I'm not here to say that no Democrats are racist or that Democratic policies haven't hurt black communities. But I am saying that this is partisan hackery at its most grotesque, which brings us back to this. And the myth of things um, like the Southern switch and the Southern strategy, which never happened. Mrs. Grift goes to Washington to lie to everybody's face about the Southern strategy being a myth. The Southern strategy refers to a realignment of political parties that started in the early 1900s but took place mostly after the Civil Rights Act passed. Republicans engaged in quiet racism to push away black people and court racist white people. This is well documented and the idea that it's a myth has been thoroughly debunked by what most would call actual historians. And heck, since we're here, real quick, a fake historian might point out that there's a higher percentage of Republicans that voted for the Civil Rights Act than Democrats. But then, if you actually look at the votes, you see that the divide is actually regional. It was a North-South thing, wonder why. Not so much a Democrat-Republican thing. And in fact, more Southern Democrats, by percentage and number of votes, in both the House and the Senate, voted for the act than did Southern Republicans. And more Northern Democrats, by percentage and number of votes in both the House and the Senate, voted for the act than did Northern Republicans. But whatever, all right, let's, let's go breeze through this, all right, because the writing is on the wall here, or in many cases, the writing is on the transcripts of interviews about this with the people who did it. Aside from the fact that the woman who made the PragerU video in question, debunking the Southern strategy, literally wrote about the Southern strategy existing in her own book, the Southern strategy was also written about by the people who engaged in it. A fake historian might write an article called The Myth of Nixon's Southern Strategy, and that fake historian might mention Nixon advisor Kevin Phillips in the article. But that fake historian, for some reason, won't include the quote from Nixon advisor Kevin Phillips saying out loud that the Republicans were never going to get more than 10 to 20 percent of the quote Negro vote and they don't need any more than that. The more Negroes who register as Democrats in the South, the sooner the Negrophobe whites will quit the Democrats and become Republicans. We can also go to this quote describing the Southern strategy from a memo written by former Nixon advisor and current Republican senator of Tennessee, Lamar Alexander. Or Lee Atwater, someone a fake historian literally never mentions for some reason. Atwater was advisor to both Ronald Reagan and George Bush I. And he said, quote, you start out in 1954 by saying, N-word, N-word, N-word. By 1968, you can't say N-word, that hurts you, backfires. So you say stuff like uh, forced busing, states' rights, and all that stuff, and you're getting so abstract. Now, you're talking about cutting taxes, and all these things you're talking about are totally economic things, and a byproduct of them is blacks get hurt worse than whites. We want to cut this is much more abstract than even the busing thing, uh, and a hell of a lot more abstract than N-word, N-word. But I'm sure that this strategy only applies to those Republican presidents, all right? Nothing after- George Bush doesn't care about black people. Damn. Candace, any comment? Here's the thing, famous ladies and gents. Nobody cares what you think. Damn. Okay, so that was easy. Maybe these people are a little full of complete bullshit and shouldn't be testifying before Congress. So why, 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 why is she there? To run cover, it seems, to lie, it seems. It's so weird that this employee of Charles Koch's Turning Point USA would be invited by the Republican members of the House Judiciary Committee who have received more than $140,000 from Charles Koch. Every one of these twerps who asked Candace questions. Here's a guy who took his time addressing the rise in white nationalist violence to ask Candace, how's she doing? Does it bother liberals that she's a conservative? Does it trigger them? And no, I'm not exaggerating. I think you've caused my friends on the left to, to go to their safe spaces, and I'd love to ex uh, explore with you a little bit of the reason for that. Um, do you consider yourself a conservative? I am a conservative, yes. Okay, are you pro-life? I am pro-life. Okay, does that trigger people when you see them that they know that you're pro-life? It makes them very upset and okay. Democrats hate me. Great job, 
Congress. Some of these Koch buddies spent their time addressing the rise in white nationalist violence by complaining about how Candace was described in the program for the hearing. Nobody else is described as progressive or liberal, but you are described as a conservative advocacy group, Turning Point USA, and a conservative commentator and political activist known for her criticism of Black Lives Matter and the Democrat Party. Two congressmen took the time to do this. And first of all, maybe calling her a conservative activist or whatever is accurate. And there aren't similar descriptions for the other people at the hearing because they're all serious people with serious jobs who take these things seriously. Also, first of all. I don't think she could quarrel with the accuracy of that. It's a simple statement of who she is. And furtheredly more. And I do just want to add that my biography, which I submitted, uh, you reduced it to one sentence, uh, uh, calling me a, a, just a conservative activist. So you're complaining about the description of her. And according to her, moments later, she submitted her own bio and they just made it shorter. And if we, if, we, if we really want to get into this, I know this doesn't matter, but you can find a signed form from Candace that everyone who testifies in front of Congress must fill out. Here it is, there's her name, the date, the topic, and her writing down her description of herself. Conservative activist, right on, what a waste of time. Conservatives love to talk about the liberal media bias. Candace mentioned it in her opening statement. Probably would have been worth mentioning that the first use of the idea of a liberal media bias was used by racist George Wallace to discredit the media's accurate coverage of the civil rights movement, but whatever. They love to talk about how there's, there's a bias against conservatives. They're, they're, they're being censored. Prager U complains constantly about this, about how, how more than 10% of their videos are in restricted mode on YouTube, a mode for schools and libraries and parents to avoid certain topics and language. Prager U has a whole lawsuit about it. But hey, 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 hey Prager U, more than 95% of our Some More News videos are in restricted mode. Literally the only two that aren't or a video that's title seemingly compliments the president, and a video that's title seemingly defends the president against the traitorous deep state. In fact, before this video you are currently watching, you probably saw an ad for PragerU. But anyway, this is a sham. At one point, this congressman asked Candace, after saying, obviously there are, ra there are racists out there and, and white nationalists, but in your experience, have you met racists while talking to conservatives? It's an odd thing for a congressman to say when one of his conservative colleagues is a white nationalist, but Candace says no, no racists or any racism. Maybe she said that because she hadn't been hired at TPUSA until after a bunch of racists were fired, or maybe she's unaware of new TPUSA hire Benny Johnson, formerly fired from BuzzFeed for a lot of plagiarism, eventual and former writer for the white nationalist friendly website The Daily Caller, owned by Tucker Carlson, who we won't be talking about today. Benny Johnson opened up a recent TPUSA event by saying this. Yes, look at this, this is amazing. Oh my God, I've never seen so many white people in one room, this is incredible. Rock and roll, everyone involved in this situation. Also, as we were filming this, the official Turning Point USA Twitter account shared a photo where one of its members promoted the Kalergi Plan, an anti-Semitic white nationalist conspiracy theory. Weird. Because the thing is, white nationalism and white nationalist violence is on the rise, according to all of the serious people at this hearing, according to the racist FBI, according to the freaking military, according to our own fucking eyes. And having Candace Owens come lie about it and put on this weird conservative YouTube grievance nonsense is grotesque. White nationalism is... What does that mean exactly? And what's the agenda behind saying it? And most important, what's the effect on the country when they repeat that again and again and again? Does it make us a better place or does it make us hate each other? I said I didn't want to talk about you today, you fancy boy. 
That, of course, is Tucker Carlson, a white nationalist propagandist, complaining about people calling others white nationalists, despite self-described white nationalists loving his show because of all the white nationalist talking points he regularly espouses. In this exact same episode from this week, he later talks about American birth rates and rising foreigner birth rates and how we must protect our birth rates. This is an issue that was central to the Christchurch Shooters Manifesto. Great replacement of white people due to birth rates. And speaking of the Christchurch Manifesto, Candace Owens, and before you freak out, I'm not saying that Candace Owens is a white nationalist or a Nazi or whatever. The Christchurch dip manifesto is full of little jokes, you know, some trolls to confuse and get a rise out of people amidst his actual beliefs, which seem to align with British fascist Oswald Mosley. Candace Owens isn't more extreme than this blurred out piece of shit. He wanted people to go after Candace to cause more trouble, but also, Candace Owens does talk about a lot of the same things and associate with people who talk about race science a lot and birth rates a lot and all of the conspiracies that made this person do the awful thing he did. It's a troll mixed with some truth and that's the problem here. For example, here's the shooter giving the OK symbol. And the OK symbol was used to troll the normies into thinking something innocuous was really some dumb Nazi sh Except it quickly became both. Some did it to trigger people. Some did it because they're racist and they had a new way to signal to each other. And some did it because everything was okay. And this, unfortunately, is all three. He's racist, he's trolling you, and it's okay. And that's the problem. That's the joke. It sucks. Candace Owens isn't some secret Nazi, but the mainstreaming of some of her views and the misrepresentation of some of her views really helps fascists who are attracted to like anti-immigration stuff, anti-feminism, anti-anti-racism, anti-cultural Marxism, the existential threat facing the West due to immigration and Muslims and declining birth rates. In leaked Discord chats, fascists openly talk about how they got there, and it ranges from memes and ironic racism to mm, info wars. Like the dipshit manifesto says, Donald Trump doesn't implement a lot of policies that help their cause, but what he says, what he stands for, and what he represents does. They're probably attracted to a right-wing demagogue who calls himself a nationalist and hates immigrants and talks about how much he could totally shoot people at the border, but he totally won't shoot people at the border. Someone who shuts down programs that prevent white nationalist terrorism, and they appreciate a person who fears and hates globalism so much that when asked about nationalism, she invokes Adolf Hitler. Yeah, I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned um, by elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about, whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. Now, I'm not gonna say that she's defending the Holocaust or Hitler here, because she's not. What she's doing is downplaying everything wrong with Nazi Germany except the Holocaust. Nationalism intrinsically creates in-groups and out-groups, xenophobia and violence, but her problem with it is when the nation expands. Yeah, nationalists have no interest in expanding the nation. Nationalists never kill their own people. That's something she said. Unbelievable. But folks like um, PragerU will say that nationalism is good. G G Gandhi was a nationalist not mentioning that he was fighting for independence, and all of his quotes about his nationalism describe how he views it as a part of the globe, and he would gladly sacrifice his nation for humanity, and would never support something for his nation at the detriment of other nations, which is kind of, it's kind of like the opposite of, 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 of nationalism, like, like, like it's the opposite of saying that we have to close down the border because most Mexicans are rapists, and then saying we have to close down the border because of incoming asylum-seeking migrant families, and then saying we have to close down the border because of a trade deficit with Mexico. The problem isn't that he took it out of Germany. Also, globalism isn't starting wars with other countries. Even if the question is included for context, this is a bizarre, ignorant answer. It's weird 
Incidentally, here's one of those actual historians describing fascists and their view of globalism. What links historical fascism to fascism today? One is the tendency to treat globalization as a conspiracy rather than a challenge. For the fascists of the 1920s and 1930s, globalization was a conspiracy, usually a Jewish conspiracy. Um, for the far right today, for the populace of today, one again hears talk of the international financiers, or of George Soros in particular, right? or in other versions, the Chinese, the Muslims. What fascists do is they take globalization and they put a face on globalization. Globalism is the natural result of people on a planet becoming more connected. It's not a conspiracy by puppeteers. Anyway, again, this was a sham, and historically immoral. Prager University has a bunch of videos from fake historians claiming that actually Hitler was a, was a socialist who killed all the socialists, and fascism is, is, is left-wing, and these are lies. These are historically immoral lies intended to distance those with fascistic tendencies from the similarities they share with the past. A uh, fake historian doesn't want you to know that fascism is a reaction hell-bent on destroying the left, and it traditionally comes to power via uneasy collaboration with elite conservatives and classical liberals, and it's marked by all this other stuff. It's real gross what they do. And we'll get into that even more in another episode, probably. So I'll just end on this moment from another Kochagrisman about the importance of free speech. You know, if there's an ideology that we don't like, the weakest thing that we can do is try to forbid it or suppress it. The strongest thing we can do is to use our own freedom of speech to confront it and defeat it on its merits. The problem is, bud, you're not doing that. You're here, right here listening to lies, and you're complaining about the word conservative in a witness's description? You want to combat bad speech with good, correct speech? Do it now, bud. Do it now. Mention the current senator from Tennessee and former Nixon advisor who literally wrote a memo about the Southern strategy. Ted Lieu, it's, it's neat you wanted to play the little Hitler clip, but you're woefully unprepared to explain what was wrong with it. So many of these people are woefully unable and unprepared to deal with these liars and grifters seeping into Congress and congressional hearings. YouTubers are better at responding to these fucking liars. Ted, you can't just play it and say, oh, she, she's, uh, he's, uh, she's defending Hitler. What you did was you played a clip of her speaking and then let her speak. The end. And how did she respond? Uh, Mr. Liu believes that black people are stupid and will not uh, pursue the full clip in its entirety. Whoa! Hey, nobody said black people, Candace. Why are you so mad? First of all, the, the context doesn't make your quote any less absolutely wrong. And second of all, again, nobody said black people, Candace. Why the f did you bring that up? In fact, you've heard about the black card, right? Oh. So you, you did an entire video about playing the black card and then... Okay, good stuff. Get that woman in Congress. <sighs> okay, bye. There. There was some news. Hey, what's up? Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and like it, the video and leave a comment about how much you liked it. Don't be mean. And visit our patreon.com slash some more news to support us and listen to our podcast, Even More News. And don't be mean.